So it's a great racing shoe. You know it's going to perform. Uh, it's a Ferrari for sure. It's not something you want to train in. It's not like the uh, like the Nissan you want to take to the uh, the grocery store. That's that's what I think of uh, my my ultras as. They're they're they're, they're sedan. I take to the, the supermarket or running around town. Um, these are the Ferraris that show up to the track. Um, track being trails. I don't do the track. Tracks are terrible. Cause I wanna be like the wind. I wanna run with you. Trails Collective, Ian here, along with teammate Jay Lamos, who opened up the review this evening. And we are going to be digging into the Salomon S-Lab Cross, a pretty slick new model that debuted in 2020, which really pushes the boundaries of material design and functionality. It, um, it's been a lot of fun seeing what this shoe uh, can really do. It's designed to be a really flexible, uber light, really aggressively studded technical trail model. So we're going to dig in a bit to the specs, the materials and the various components, how it rides, durability, as well as some of the comparisons within Salomon and outside of Salomon. So let's dig in. All right, specs. S-Lab Cross rolls in at a price point of $180. Damn! Top tier, as Jay referenced in the intro, it definitely feels rise and is priced like a Ferrari in the trail shoe lineup. And I think what goes into the price and having such a high price tag is just the full package. I mean, it's a very uh, unique, exceptional design, whether it be the Gator, whether it be the specific materials in the upper, which we'll talk about here in a second, uh, to their uh, higher price midsole foam, outsole rubber, really comes together in a fairly high ticket price, is what it is. Weight, 8.1 ounces or 230 grams for a US men's size nine. And I think for as much as that goes into this shoe, it feels like a lighter shoe than even the 8.1 ounces would suggest. Uh, it really does uh, meld with your foot and um, pretty exceptionally light in feel. Stack height. <clears throat> Salmon reports the stack height as 13 millimeters in the heel, 9 millimeters in the forefoot for a drop of 4 millimeters. I question some of the uh, stack stats that companies provide, and because of that, I got my own. Uh, calipers and can do my own uh, measures and so did just that and I actually come up with 16 millimeters in the heel excluding lugs um, I, I have a tough time being able to measure uh, the toe box to penetrate the upper uh, but the four millimeter offset feels right to me uh, but the 16 millimeter also feels right to me and so what I think what I think the missing component is is Salomon's providing the midsole stack height measure, which may be 13, but what's also being left out of the equation is, is the top sole uh, on the inside, which is probably about a millimeter thick, probably has a lasting to the shoe between that top sole and the midsole, which is about a millimeter, and then probably has an outsole kind of base rubber uh, that the lugs are then molded onto or with that's also about a millimeter. So comparing it to some of the others, I'm gonna stick with my in-house measures of 16 millimeters in the heel, adding in the six millimeter lugs, which they uh, have and measure in with, and you get a cumulative stack of uh, 22 millimeters in the heel and 18 in the forefoot, and that feels pretty correct. Upper material is a synthetic, uh, woven in in the shroud with the fiber aramid. Uh, aramid, actually we'll talk about it with the upper here in a second. The insole, there's not a removable insole in this model. There is one that has a fairly soft uh, top sole there. It's just not removable, which I think makes sense and goes with the mud wet package and being high performance. And as much movement that's in there, I think if you had an insole that was loose, that would potentially shift around in there if not slip up. So I think that's probably a good call there. The midsole material is Energy Cell Plus, and we'll dig into that a little bit. I think that's really unique because there are other models within the Salomon lineup that use Energy Cell Plus that feel nothing like the S-Lab Cross does underfoot. 
And then the outsole, uh, they use Contagrip TA, which is the outsole rubber that they use specifically for their loose terrain and soft ground and Amphib, as an example, models. So, uh, shape and fit. So similar to other S-Lab models, it has a very narrow silhouette in the heel, through the midfoot, <clears throat> along with some of the other updated models for 2020, which was, I think, expanding intentionally Solomon's range and catering to the U.S. market. They did uh, box out the forefoot or toe box design a bit, so I think it accommodates and allows for most people to uh, splay out in the forefoot, forefoot a bit. The, uh, despite the shoe being so narrow in the midfoot, the, both the midsole material as well as the upper uh, where it meets is soft enough that it, I think it still really allows a midfoot to drop into the shoe. Uh, my midfoot is somewhat dropped or collapsed and uh, something like the speed cross uh, I can't wear. It totally just digs in pretty quickly to my midfoot and my arch whereas I don't have any problems with the um, S-Lab cross so far. Uh, heel has a pretty narrow fit uh, so and its uh, volume inside is it's really fine. As I mentioned, the wider toe box allows for some splay and that also has a little bit more depth, I think, and allows a little bit more berth than some of the traditional S-Lab models uh, would. So, uh, yeah. So, let's get into components and design. So, I'll take you through some of the materials in the upper and then I'll weave in a clip from Jay uh, talking a bit about the fit uh, there. So, the most, need most noticeable feature, rather, uh, of the upper, the S-Lab Cross, is the integrated gaiter. Uh, comes up to about mid-ankle or a little bit higher to your malleoli or your ankle bones. It, uh, it's a synthetic fiber here, really quite soft. It has its quick lace garage uh, right around where a traditional tongue would be that tucks in from the bottom. And it has a layer of padding right through the, this section of the tongue which really prevents uh, you feeling the compression set over where the laces would be integrated into this upper or gaiter and this is this feels really like a soft sock it's got some stretch to it and it almost feels like a thin neoprene uh, down woven into this where it meets the the vamp which we'll talk about here in a second they also have padding which suffices as a traditional heel collar would and I think the combination of this comp uh, basically stretching to accommodate and wrap pretty uh, securely around your hind foot and your Achilles, the uh, padding around what would be a traditional heel cup really does anchor in some feet. Uh, a friend who did get the shoe uh, earlier, who's a traditional Salomon fan, uh, couldn't quite get a secure fit in the heel and that ended up being a break point for him. So there are some people that may have issues with it. I've not. Another one, another teammate, Care Davis, who did weigh in some on this review. Uh, unfortunately, we had tech issues with the clips and the audio uh, of them. One of her points of feedback, though, was she did get some blistering up around the gaiter or the sock. She really wanted to love it, and she's wondering whether she may adjust to that a bit, whether it be callus or whether the upper breaks in. Uh, but she is one that had some uh, issues with the, with the upper. Uh, that um, interior sock design extends all the way down into the toe and then wrapping over top of it is this shroud. And in the review on the Trails Collective site, I'm just referring to it the Shroud of Aramid. And that's important just because in this upper or this shroud that wraps it, uh, what you can see is they're weaving Aramid fibers. And Aramid goes, Aramid goes by uh, trade names such as Kevlar which many of you will know as being a very durable fabric. Uh, I think the, the tensile strength is five times that of steel, so it's a really quite a durable product. And so what was something that caught my eye when I um, met with Salman a year out at a conference out in Austin with a line review uh, was that we had talked about some of the properties in the shoe. I saw one of the prototypes, handled it a bit, and what they mentioned, and which what I was really excited to try on my foot, was the material in the upper, in addition to the aramid, the material they're using in the shroud is a hydrophobic, basically, fabric. And so what I'm feeling, and Jay may com comment on it is, as well, or actually he did comment on it, uh, is this shoe probably feels like it drains better than any shoe that I've ever worn or owned. 
outside of my Adidas Atastar steeple spikes, which I uh, raced to death uh, pretty well in college as a steepler. I wanted to find a picture of those to weave in, but I, I couldn't find them. But the, um, it's not that the shoe necessarily it drains, it does, but it's just the material just doesn't hang on to water. So I've uh, had multiple creek crossings in it, I've jumped right in, and what I notice is, uh, just I, I notice that my socks wet. It's still a porous material in the upper and the water does come through. I'll feel my sock being wet, but literally it's instantaneous because the, the material in the upper just doesn't absorb water. So immediately right after the stream is uh, submersion, let alone running quarter mile, half mile later, the shoe just feels dry. The sock-like uh, gaiter, even that doesn't really take on as much water as it feels like it would. Uh, so pretty stellar and outstanding design and material there. The shroud also woven in with the Kevlar, which has the tensile strength and that matrix fabric, which they're calling it, uh, also allows it to have more durability in terms of taking side to side or off camber motions. It's still a really minimal shoe, so, uh, and we'll get into that uh, here in a second. Uh, you still are gonna get some tweak and motion, I guess, over the shoe, just because it's so soft. But I think that the upper does a really good job of uh, hanging on. Uh, so I'm going to let uh, Jay also comment a bit on the upper and how that feels and how it performs for him. With this shoe, we are introduced to this new fabric called uh, Matrix. Uh, pretty cool name. Uh, it almost looks like Matrix kind of stuff too, right on the pattern there. Um, so it's basically also another thing I was very surprised with. When you look at it online or even from a distance, it looks like just flimsy. Almost I'm not trying to uh, knock on other shoes here. They're still great shoes, but it almost looks like like a Nike running shoe where it's like just soft and very comfortable. Uh, but it's actually the complete opposite, uh, aside from the comfort part. It's actually very rough, very rugged, but still soft enough to just move very easy. Um, no restrictions at all. And nice thing about it is you have nothing along the side here um, to create any hard spots or blisters or just bother your foot in any way, shape or form. It's almost like a sock, but a really, really tough, durable sock. Um, very nice nice and snug doesn't stretch as you go um which is very nice it's a, once you lace them up they are they're on there they're they feel nice and tight um the gator here it's a little thick um but i didn't see any issue with it i didn't get any hotter because of it or anything um it's a nice feature for a shoe like this because we now lose that stiff uh, wrapping around the heel um, that a shoe would normally have and lock your foot in there. But with the Gator, what I found was it actually connects the bottom of the shoe with the top of my ankle and everything and it makes it one. And now when I go uphill, there is no disconnection at all at the bottom. It's just, everything is one piece. And that may be what makes this shoe feel like it, it likes to go uphill very comfortably. It, it helps a lot. Um, I'm not a strong climber. Uh, and this shoe definitely makes it a little easier to travel uphill. And just everything back here feels like it's one piece. And the second you step up, it just everything just goes with you and really allows for the front to grip whatever you're trying to grab onto. Going down a layer to the midsole. So the uh, midsole material of choice for uh, many of their models, this one included, is a blend of EVA, which is really prolific within uh, the running shoe industry. The specific blend in this one in terms of their trade name is Energy Cell Plus and it feels relatively soft and bouncy. So Energy Cell Plus is the same material that's also used in the uh, Speed Cross lineup, you know, this being the Speed Cross 5. But whereas, and you might even be able to see it, when I really compress or try to compress this midsole of the Speed Cross, I don't know whether you can see the compression, but I gotta work at it to, to really push in with my fingers and get a compression set. 
with the S Lab uh, Cross here, even though it's Energy Cell Plus, it's a lot easier to compress. And I feel that. So I almost question really whether it's the same midsole material because it feels quite different. I think if you put the uh, Speed Cross on one side of the uh, parrot or one side of the slider scale with Energy Cell Plus on a firm firm what feels to me like rigid ride you'd have the uh, S-Lab cross on the other soft bouncy side probably with the um, wild cross uh, right there in the middle so uh, midsole is designed to be uh, bouncy responsive as well as durable I feel like that's the claim made by most companies so I kind of question even those descriptors but it does really feel bouncy and responsive under the foot in terms of the responsive angle, for sure more in the wild cross, just because it has a, a firmer a ride and upper, just a more structured shoe. Um, so I think more responsive in that sense here. This has so much motion to it that it's tough as a whole to feel responsive in terms of like a traditional racing flat or firm midsole would, but the material itself does respond pretty well. The, uh, let's see. Yeah, so uh, let's get in a bit to the outsole, going a tier down. So one of the other most noticeable things about the S-Lab Cross is the, uh, the really aggressive uh, lug depth uh, at the six millimeter lugs, and also using the outsole uh, Contagrip TA. So this is one that's also used in their other soft ground models that's designed to be um, exceptional in their line over uh, loose terrain and soft ground. The um, outsole design or the lug pattern proper uh, has, uh, as you can see, uh, basically pods. And so this is conceptually uh, designed to be similar to a gecko's foot is what Salman is claiming in terms of the inspiration. It's designed to be able to uh, be malleable and mold to different terrain and have these pods that would really grip. The, uh, pods themselves, some of them are just um, um, basically the same shape uh, all around or uh, oblique. Uh, others are carved with a chevron design pattern and that's just the notch that you can see in the forefoot here. And actually I'll let, um, I'll let Jay comment a bit on it in his experience here uh, as well. So take it Jay. Um, like I just said, um, it grips really well going uphill. This uh, pattern down here is like totally new for a Solomon shoe. Um, and at first I thought, wow, what are these like little round things gonna, gonna do for me? Um, so they're not all round. Some have the little V cut out into them. And these round ones are actually really nice for gripping on rock whether wet or dry it gives you that extra amount of rubber um, connection with the with the rock really allowing for some nice grip and i find the front here to be really really nice for going uphill you really don't slip back or struggle to to grip it's almost like your legs don't have to work as hard to to climb you just plant your foot and just pull yourself up from the shoe and it does a lot of the work for you. It's hard to explain. It, you almost have to experience it. I couldn't figure it out myself, but it felt really nice. Um, the heel, although narrow, it's, it's a really small heel, uh, typical Solomon, but the, the pattern is the same. And you can see that the V is now cut the opposite way which I found to be extremely helpful for going downhill. Um, stuff like scree or just like really loose dirt or, or even mud. If it's something real steep, I tend to plant my heel to kind of as a, like a break or like stability and getting a little more control. What this shoe does is it really digs in. It's almost like you have like a dew claw and it's, it's really helping you just keep yourself uh, upright. Um, very very nice uh up and down the grip is amazing um yeah they got that solomon contra grip so even on wet stuff and i tried it on wet stuff it felt great um the wetter the better pretty much um also another thing i was excited about with this shoe is something told me it'd be great in snow 
and luckily we got some snow this week and I was able to try it. Sure enough, it grips really, really well in the snow. It goes right through whatever powdery stuff is up top, digs in enough to grip. It's great. Um, that's about it for, uh, for the grip. Um, feels great underneath. Uh, even though there's no rock plate, this area here, um, I really tried to test it on sharp rocks to see if I would, if I could come down on something sharp and it would hurt and I would feel it. I didn't. Uh, there's enough cushioning here, even though it's a super minimal shoe, there's enough cushioning here uh, to protect your foot. Really doesn't feel terrible. Um, that's about it. Great grip. So, uh, I guess with that, we can segue into the durability. The uh, It's really been outstanding so far. Um, I'll let Jay has, uh, well, Jay, take it. Um, durability. Usually a racing shoe from Solomon. Um, a lot of people say, oh, Solomon's fall apart so fast, like 200 miles and they're done. Um, I won't disagree. Um, but again, I think of S-Lab shoes as Ferraris. They are made to perform. They're not made for training. Um, so they won't make it past 200, maybe 250 miles, depending on, on, the, on the terrain. I usually get about 200, but running in the, uh, in the Northeast and trying to stick to more technical stuff, they, they take a beating. They take a real, real good beating. Uh, now for this shoe, it's been put through the same stuff that a Sense 7 would be put through. Difference is, uh, due to this matrix fabric on the upper here, it's extremely durable. There are no signs, I mean it's just dirty, other than dirty, there are no signs of real bad anything really it still looks very very new even on the bottom I mean with so aggressive how could you really see um, anything wearing down but even still it's still looks very very new and this is about 200 miles in so as far as durability this shoe um, by the looks of it, easily 400 miles. Um, it will last about 400 miles uh, in very rocky terrain. Um, but we'll see. I'll uh, keep you guys posted on that. This is about 200 miles in, and that's about... Uh, it's over 50 miles of racing, so over 50 miles of some hard running in, in, in the shoe, and the rest is just fun, fast, slow pace, up and down, uh, all over the Northeast. It's been um, in Hudson Highlands State Park, it's been in New Hampshire, it's been in the snow, it's been in the rain, it's been in the heat, um, mud, dry dirt, all of that stuff, and it has not let me down. So, uh, what other things that we can compare it to? So I had mentioned uh, for instance, speed cross in a lineup. Just a, a, in my opinion, just a worldly different shoe. Not even the same ballpark in terms of feel, ride, experience, even though it also has a fairly aggressive lug pattern. Definitely feels more like an S-Lab shoe. So uh, one would be the Heat Hoka Evo Jaws. Hoka Evo Jaws is one that I absolutely loved right out of the box. It for sure, ha well, all right. He, Hoka Evo Jaws. For someone wanting a minimal, aggressive design, a hair more cushion than I think the uh, s -Lob Cross brings to the table, and a lower price tag. Stack height is 23 in the heel, 20 in the forefoot. Has a three millimeter drop, so a little bit lower drop than the uh, s -Lab Cross. Six millimeter lugs as well, and weighs in at 7.2 ounces or slightly lighter than the s -Lab Cross does. One of the uh, downsides for me though, is I think it's a phenomenal shoe for uh, mud, light trails, cross country. But when I've, and this one I've raced up to, I think a 50K, uh, the one that took this one out in terms of being a shoe in my rotation was using it for half of Manitou's Revenge last year, I believe. And just with some of those uh, descents and technical terrains in the course, um, I punctured right through 
uh, the upper material and how to delaminate from the toe cap. So a pretty cool comparison, I think, to the S-Lab Cross, but with that caveat of what it's designed for and maybe what exactly it's not designed for. Uh, another one that you could compare it to would be the Innovate uh, X-Talon G235. That's not one that I have in the store to show you, uh, but I will plug a image here. Uh, for someone wanting similar, uh, similarly really minimal but aggressively uh, studded or outsole design, will ride a bit firmer and has a little bit lower forefoot volume. Uh, the stack heights of that one are 13 in the heel, 7 in the forefoot, so an even lower stack than the Salomon uh, S-Lab Cross here. Uh, has a 6 millimeter drop, 8 millimeter lug, so the lug's even more aggressive in terms of depth than the Cross, and it weighs in at 8.2 ounces, right around the same weight as the S-Lab Cross. And it also retails for 185, so it stays at that top tier. Um, so, one thing that might uh, somebody, I guess, go with that one, I think Salmon in, or, um, Innovate in general, a little bit firmer underfoot, so that may have it feel more responsive. And I think it's going to feel a little bit narrower in the toe box with an Innovate fit scale of two and more akin to a traditional maybe S-Lab design there. And then if somebody wanted a little bit more stack, a little bit more shoe, but still uh, fairly aggressive, uh, the Wild Cross, and you can catch one of my earlier reviews here, a shoe that I absolutely loved, Weighs in a little bit lower price point, still does great in mud, uh, but may offer somebody a little bit more protection underfoot. And then I'll have Jay comment in on a bit on his experience and comparisons. So, uh, some of the general takeaways of the shoe is really just knowing what the shoe is designed for and what it's not. It's designed to be a really aggressive, uh, soft ground, can be some loose terrain and uh, mud, water, really exceptional in all those regards. But somebody has to be prepared for a shoe to be so minimal. Really great ground feel, but your foot definitely has to do more of the work. And that's something that I for sure noticed. I noticed a little bit in my Achilles uh, through the, the 50 miles and the runs and just noticed it, my foot on fairly technical uh, terrain. Uh, it'll handle it, as I'll show, I guess, in this clip where it feels fine. But uh, when you're really putting it through that technical terrain, you really do feel it and your foot has to do that work. And I'll let Jay comment on that uh, here as well. Uh, initially, I thought this, is, this could be a shoe that could go the distance. Um, but then I found out that distance for me is about 20 to 26 miles, depending on the terrain. Now here, um, also what I like is very technical stuff. So the shoe could take the beating really well. You can see for yourself, it's got about 200 miles on it um, and it looks great, no tears, nothing is falling apart just yet. But uh, being that it's a minimal shoe, you do start to feel it uh, after about 20 or so miles. So it's a shoe for a shorter, a shorter race. I trained in it quite a bit, but I don't, I don't train too long, nothing over really 10, 13 miles. So I never really got to feel um, a beating from that. But once I raced in them, I did two trail marathons in them. And in both, towards the end, my feet wanted the ultras to relax in. So uh, that's really running you through some of the specs, the design, the components, our experiences in the shoe. Shoe really does excel as long as you know what you're getting into. If you're really wanting something that has great ground feel, exceptional flexibility, lightweight package, and really actually pretty great so far durability in such a minimal package, this may be the one for you. Uh, check it out. Uh, we can access them through the Trails Collective, but don't have any in store at the moment. Let us know if you want to try some. Check in with your local retailer, see if they can bring it in for you and get a pair. See us out on a race, J or I. Maybe we'll switch, route, switch shoes, let you run them. And yeah. So uh, Salomon, great job on this one. Uh, really, again, pushing the boundaries. It really does speak to your slogan or motto of time to play. And we have been stoked to put some miles into it and more miles to come. So thanks for tuning into this review. Leave some comments in the comment section if you want to weigh in with your own experiences or if you have any questions and we will follow up. All right, so till next time, see ya. And it's a trade name within Solomon is called the Matrix Fiber. And just as really as, as badass as this shoe looks, 
and knowing that they're intentionally using the term matrix, I just thought um, how much cooler it would be if Neo uh, in the film matrix actually were sporting these bad boys, how much just more effective he may have been in a scene like this.